Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to talk about WinLink over Wi-Fi. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So if you've been around WinLink very long at all, as soon as I mention Telnet, the first thing that pops into your head is checking your WinLink messages over the internet instead of using RF. And that is one use case for using Telnet. However, we can also use that same protocol to make a peer-to-peer WinLink connection over a wired or wireless network. Now, when would you want to use something like this? Well, a few circumstances that come to mind right offhand would be uh, maybe for fill day, when you've already got a wireless network established, you could use this type of connection to connect uh, between two stations and make a WinLink connection. So it would be handy for maybe passing a message to your buddy at the other end of the fill day site. We can also use this over Arden mesh networks. Uh, so it will work equally well uh, with that if you happen to be into Arden mesh. And it can basically be used anytime two machines are on the same network, whether that's wired or wireless. In addition, some of the things that you get is lightning fast email transfers because you're relying on that uh, wired or wireless network's data throughput speed to deliver your message. So it's much quicker than using RF. In addition to that, we can also move much larger files using the wired or wireless network. So you're limited on how much you can uh, send over RF. If memory serves me right, I think that's 120 kilobits. I might be off on that number. But uh, with this type of connection uh, on the same network, you can send files that are one or two megabytes in size without any trouble whatsoever. And it's pretty dang quick to do so. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Raspberry Pis. Yep, Pis. This is plural because we're going to need two of them to demo this for you today. But let's go ahead and head over there and show you guys how to set this up and make it happen. Okay, so let's walk you through the test system that I've got set up here. Uh, what you're looking at currently on the screen is my Ultimate Shack Build Pi that I run every day here in the Shack. Uh, and if you look up in the top right-hand corner, you'll see KM4ACK hyphen uh, ULT for ultimate. That is one of our machines that we will be using. The second one is this Raspberry Pi here. Everything's going to look uh, very, very similar, but if you notice up in the top right corner, you will see the word test box. So you'll know which machine I'm on as we start walking through this. So we're going to be starting with the Ultimate Pi and getting it configured first. Now, before we do anything, what I would recommend is backing up your PAT config file, and we can do that with PAT menu. So I'm going to come down here to Manage PAT WinLink. I'm going to choose Backup the PAT config file, and click Backup Config. It'll give you a message here, a dialog box that tells you that config file has been backed up. And we can simply press OK. Now, in this uh, same menu here, we're going to click Set the Listen Mode. And what we need to do is we need to tell Pat to listen for incoming Telnet connections. So, we'll put a check mark by this first one right here, Telnet, and go ahead and say Set the Listen Mode it'll come back and tell us that uh, it is now listening in Telnet. So we can simply click OK here, and we can go ahead and go back to the main menu. Our setup is complete for this Raspberry Pi. Now you'll need to do the exact same thing on the other Raspberry Pi. Also, notice right here in the PAT uh, inbox, you'll see this right up here that says Listening Telnet. 
And that's just another visual indicator that you are listening for incoming Telnet connections. Now, one last piece of information we need from this particular Pi is the IP address. Now, in my case, these are not connected over the wireless. We're going to be using the wired IP address, but this will work uh, the same for a wireless connection, provided you're both on the same network. And there's a couple of different ways that we can get uh, that wired or wireless IP address. If you've got Conky running, you can look right over here on the right hand side and that will give you the information we need. Now, I'll be using this address on the bottom, which is the wired IP address. If you don't have Conky running, I'm going to show you one more way we can grab that same information. Open a terminal window and just run host name space hyphen capital I and press return and it will give you any IP addresses that are currently associated with your Raspberry Pi. So this one here is my wired address. This one on this side is my wireless address. So now that we've got all of the bits and pieces that we need, let's go ahead and head over to the second Raspberry Pi and get it set up. Okay, so we're on the test box here. Uh, Pat is running in the background, and you'll see that it's already listening for Telnet connections. So the only other thing I need to do is create a Telnet alias that will allow me to connect to the other Raspberry Pi. So from the main uh, menu in Pat, we're going to go ahead and click Manage Pat Winlink again, and you'll see a button right here that says Add P2P Alias. So we want to go ahead and click on that. And it's going to ask us the call sign of the station that we want to connect to. Now, in my case, obviously it's my call sign on both Raspberry Pis. But if you were connecting to someone else's Raspberry Pi, you would want to use their call sign in this particular box if you're the one initiating the connection. So I'll go ahead and enter my call sign in that box. And in the next box down, we're going to enter the IP address of the remote Raspberry Pi. So for my other Raspberry Pi, that was 10.231.47.69. And I'll go ahead and click Update right here. And I'll get a message telling me that that alias has been added. We can simply click OK. And let's jump over to the PAT mailbox. Now, anytime you add an alias to uh, Pat, you do need to go ahead and refresh this window if you had it open already. So I'm just going to click the refresh button right there, and then we'll go ahead and click action and connect. From our alias dropdown, we can select that new peer-to-peer -peer alias that we created. Simply pressing connect will make that connection happen. And you can see that everything went through down here in the bottom window. But I didn't have any messages to actually pass back and forth. So let's go back to the ultimate Raspberry Pi and let's create a message. Okay, so once again on the ultimate Raspberry Pi, we'll click uh, Action and Compose. Now this message, again, you got to remember, this is a little confusing because I'm sending messages to myself, so I'm using... Uh, my call sign in both instances. Uh, obviously, you would address this to who you wanted it to be sent to. So I'm going to send this to myself, and we'll just put uh, test for video as the subject. Make sure you click this box right here that says P2P only, and we'll just put test in the subject line, or I'm sorry, in the body rather. Now, let's go ahead and post that message to the Outbox. If we click on the Outbox here, you will see that message sitting here on the Ultimate Raspberry Pi. So it's waiting for the other station to make a connection, and then it will pass this message over to them. So now, let's jump back to the Test Box Raspberry Pi again. Now I'm going to click on the inbox here just so that you can see that the inbox is empty. And let's go ahead and initiate another peer-to-peer -peer connection using Telnet. So again, I click Action and Connect. 
and now I want to choose that alias that we created earlier from the drop-down. Go ahead and click connect again and you should see that message populate right here in the inbox of Pat. So there you have it guys, there's how you can create peer-to-peer -peer WinLink connections over a wired or wireless network. Now, be sure to check out next week's video once it's released. We're going to take this information and expand on it a bit further. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.